It's wonderful to be able to greet you at this holiday season and in spite of all the chaos in the world to remember that Stille uh, Nacht when the Lord Jesus came into the world at Bethlehem. And our topic uh, is the mega miracle of history. There's no question that Jesus performed miracles. We know some of the famous ones, uh, water turned to wine, the feeding of the multitude with the little boy's lunch, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, all wonderful pictures of what he can do for us, but in a much bigger spiritual way. There were hundreds of these miracles. In fact, sometimes the Bible records occasions like this one in Matthew 12, 15, quote, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Or this one in Luke 6, 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went from him and healed them all. But did you ever think that Jesus himself is the greatest miracle? He is the mega miracle of all time. Why do I say that? Because that's God's message to the human race. In 1 Timothy 3.16 we read, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. The world great here is mega. The heart of God is full of mysteries. These mysteries are divine secrets he keeps to himself, things that have never entered into human minds and that we would never figure out by ourselves. But then, at just the right moment in history, ta-da, the curtain rises and God lets us in on his secret. This, my friend, will go on forever. But in this verse, we discover a special mystery that is called a mega secret. What was it? That the invisible God would become visible and that this man would be so perfect that God's Holy Spirit could declare him just. The angels who covered their faces in his presence in heaven would now see him, born in a stable, sleeping on a hillside, despised by his creatures, nailed to a tree, and lying in a tomb. But this mega secret would also become the mega unsecret, preached to all the nations and believed on by millions. Then, when his work on earth was done, he would rise back up where he was before, but now a real man sitting on the throne of God and the divine prototype of what God would make us like through matchless grace. When the Savior's birth was first announced, here's what Matthew said, quoting the prophet Isaiah. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Now that term, great light, is mega light. What does it mean? The mega secret was a mega star. That great light is a person. Our Lord Jesus is the promised mega star of Numbers 24, 17. He illuminates everything. He shines all the way from God's heart into ours. That's what 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says. God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Only in Jesus can we see things clearly. When Jesus shines on our possessions, he shows us, quote, beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses, Luke 12, 15. When he shines on our personal relationships, he says, love your enemies, 
Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 44 and 45. Wow, that's mega bright, isn't it? And when he shines onto our pathway through life, he makes this wonderful promise. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 8 and 12. For those who confess the darkness of their own hearts and receive the light of life in him as his free gift, we anticipate a glorious moment when, as we read in 2 Peter 1.19, we do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Then we'll go to live with him in that glorious place where, quote, the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is the light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. There shall be no night there. Revelation 21, 23 to 25. But our Lord Jesus is also the mega sun. The angel said to Mary, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Luke 1. 31 to 33. Again, our word. He will be mega, the son of the highest. Now, God didn't just want to patch up his broken creatures with broken hearts and broken bodies and broken minds and put us back into a weed-free garden somewhere in his vast universe. No, he had a mega plan. What if he could somehow bring us into his family. We would not just be street waifs eating table scraps and wearing secondhand clothes, a mercy if he did that. No, what if these sinners could actually be his children, sons and daughters of the king, sharing his own life, living as his heirs in the palace and actually reigning with him? Who would think of such a thing? God did, but what would it cost him to do this? He had an infinite amount of everything else, but he only had one son. But if his one son, his only begotten son, would be willing to give a supernatural life transfusion, taking our death for us and then giving his life to us, by this miracle, God could, quote, bring many sons to glory, Hebrews 2.10. But please note that the one named Jesus, meaning Jehovah is salvation, will still and forever remain the only mega son, who will be king of kings and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Of course, there's so much more. The same book of Hebrews tells us that in the meantime, our Lord Jesus is the mega servant, looking after us all the way home. Chapter 4, verses 14 to 16 reads, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He's the mega high priest. There's no one else like him, faithful to all the righteous claims of God and merciful to all the frailties and weaknesses of us poor folk, all of them Christian. What do you do when you struggle? even when you fall. Rush 
right to him. The door is kept open on purpose. He waits to restore you, to comfort you, to encourage you, to do whatever is necessary to let you live under his smile. Ah, that's the place to be. How do I know this? Well, I read to the end of the book. Here's Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. See that? It's true. He's the mega shepherd of his sheep. And in a signed affidavit, he has sworn he will not lose even one wayward lamb. The book of Acts, telling the story of the early church, shows the results of the Lord's mega care. We read that they can utilize mega power in their service for him, Acts 4.33, and rely on his mega grace for every need. They were noticed for their mega joy, chapter 8 and verse 8, even though they had mega persecution, verse 1 of the same chapter. But even if there were many adversaries, they found a mega door of opportunity, 1 Corinthians 16, 9, to go through this door into the blessing of the Lord. So, to you all, I wish a great year, a mega year, if you will. How could it not be? With the message of the mega secret to share with our poor old world, the light of the mega star to illuminate our pathway, the daily companionship of the mega sun, the interceding ministry of the mega servant, and the pastoral care of the mega shepherd, all the way home to glory.